What's that expression? If you can't serve as a good example, then you'll just have to serve as a terrible warning. I'm genuinely unsure as to whether this miscloaked tutorial counts as a good example or a terrible warning, but we're gonna go for it anyway. If you would like to wear the coolest looking but least practical garment in all of Scadriel, here's how you do it. First, you will need fabric. I bought a five meter bolt of undyed calico for 16 pounds because it was on offer. Technically, you need to wash and dye it before you start because otherwise it will shrink and then maybe your seams will pucker or something. It turns out all right, even if you do it after Afterwards, but I would advise <laughs> that you dye it first. If you don't need to dye it, wash it first. You will also need lots of thread. I probably used at least 60 meters of black cotton thread, maybe more. That being said, I did too much sewing more on that in a second. And of course, vast quantities of ribbon. I got 100 meters of dark gray acetate 36 millimeter ribbon, and I used basically all of that, and then I ordered 200 meters of 24 millimeter dark gray acetate ribbon. I have not used all of that. I have probably used more than 100 meters of it though. I may have overdone it a bit with the ribbon. 200 meters is probably sufficient. I ordered mine from ribbon.co.uk because where else would you get 300 meters of ribbon? Next, you will need to set up your sewing machine. And trust me, unless you've decided to glue everything, you will need a sewing machine. Beg, borrow, buy, but don't try and hand sew a mist cloak, you'll just die. First step, make the capelet. For a full circle, I ended up trimming mine to about two thirds of a circle, but you do you, cut yourself a big square. Fold it in half and then half again. Make sure the new baby square is at least 15 inches on each side. Mine was originally much bigger, but learn from my mistakes, it doesn't need to be that big. Then take a pin and chalk and some string and mark a quarter of a circle that has about a 15 inch radius and cut it out. Cut a little quarter circle at the corner for your neck, but don't worry about making it too small, you can always make it bigger later. The radius on the neck on mine ended up about three inches, but just cut according to how big your neck is. Then cut a slit from the neck hole to the bottom for the front opening. Iron down some seams, hem everything, and then feel extremely pleased with yourself. If this is where you decide that a full circle is overkill, trim the front of your capelet to your satisfaction, and then hem that too. You can also fix the neck at this point. The simplest way to do this would just be to make a single semicircle and cut out a hole for your neck, and then hem that but I decided to get a little bit fancy. Goodness knows why. Evidently, I am over ambitious. On to the hood, which is exactly what Nemo said when I was trying to cut it out. So I went for a really big kind of Jedi style hood. The bigger your hood is, the more of the neck it will cover at the back, even when your hood is up, which hides a multitude of sins. So I would always advise big hoods. Big hoods are good. You don't have to have two layers to make the hood, but I did and I think it looks nicer. You figure out what kind of shape you want your hood to be and you make it as two or four pieces, depending. I made mine as two. Having determined the distance from the hollow of my throat over my head and back down, I used two 45 by 25 inch pieces of fabric to make the hood. My template was approximately this shape, but I ended up altering it a bit as it wasn't lying quite how I wanted it. So I ironed down a bunch of seams and then I pinned the pieces of the hood together with the outsides facing. Right sides together, that's what that means. I see it all the time in sewing tutorials and I'm like, sure, okay. And having sewn around most of the hood, but not all of it, I then flipped it inside out and it looked great. I then had to pin the hood to the cloak and try and kind of bunch it up and space it out appropriately so that it would lie neatly and that was kind of a pain. Having thus achieved one capelet, it needed to be dyed a different color, for which I initially used fabric dye in dark gray. The furniture dye was not a great success. And so I used about three tablespoons of black dylon fabric dye to make it darker, but not properly black. It turned out pretty well. I uh, quite like this color. I think it looks good. Anyway, capelet now completed. I ironed it and tried to figure out a way to attach a button and buttonhole to my satisfaction. I tried to use the sewing machine. It did not work, so I just ended up snipping a buttonhole into it and uh, attaching a button in the, you know, old-fashioned hand sewing kind of way. This is the buttonhole. Yeah, and uh, this is the button. When you attach your ribbons to the front over the top of the buttonhole, don't, like, stick them down the whole way. I had to cut a little hole so that I could access the button because I uh, accidentally sewed down over the top of the button. Whoopsie. And now the thing that turns this from a boring capelet into a mist cloak, the ribbon. Let me save you a whole lot of time and effort and explain the actual fastest way to attach ribbons to a mist cloak. Uh, yeah, there, there are some really dodgy bits. Basically what happened to me is, I got kind of bored of sewing all of the very wide ribbons to the cloak and what I decided to do was just kind of haphazardly attach some and hope that my 
outer layer of ribbons would, would cover any of the bits that looked bad. As you can see, if I move these ones out of the way, that didn't quite work at the top there. So, right, you don't see that because uh, I kind of fixed it and obviously the, I've spread out the back so you can see it properly. But uh, as you can see, we've, we've kind of covered that over so it doesn't look so bad. But here's what you do. These, these are your friend. So you get a ribbon. Mine had to be approximately the length of my arm stretched out. And you get another ribbon of the same thing. You attach them so they're closer together at the top than the bottom. This is not absolutely necessary. And then you sew, stitch them together down here for about 10 to 12 inches. 25 to 30 centimeters. You sew these together and then the rest of them just flow freely to the ground. You get another one, sew it on, sew it on, sew it on, sew it on. So this is a small one, which is not fully attached because I, I just wanted it to be able to flow. But this is, you know, five or six ribbons just sewn together at the top like this. And then you attach them to the cloak. And if you're at the front, for example, you can sew them down to the cloak properly. If you want them to flow more freely or cover over a bad looking bit, then you can just leave them flowing. It's all right. After all, when you when you put it on, uh, as you can see, the hood covers a multitude of sins. We do make a lot of noise though. The first way I tried was to sew down a bunch of individual ribbons. If I hadn't got bored, it'd have been fine, but well, I did and you saw. So I had lots of, uh, this is, 36 millimeter ribbon, which is about an inch and a half, I think. Uh, so I tried to do those as like my base layer, uh, but then I got bored. My idea was that I'd have a lot of ribbons attached to a single ribbon that I could just sew on, but that did not cover the bad parts, so the ribbon chunks were required. Trust me on this, the quickest and most efficient way to do this is to sew ribbons together in chunks and then attach them. Because if you do it in a, like a little chunk, then you can fit it to the shape of your shoulders basically. Hot tip, when you sew them down, don't, uh, if you're attaching them, you can sew them most of the way down, don't attach them at the bottom, and don't sew them all the way to the bottom of the capelet, because once you've got all of these lovely overlapping ribbons, you may still think, you know what, actually I could use a few more ribbons sort of fluttering, which you can very easily do, because you can just attach them to the inside. I have not had to do this because I had so many on the outside because I tried it two different ways, and, you know. But if you fold your outside ribbons up out of the way, you can then sew these to the inside and then there will just be lots of ribbons hanging down and you won't have to worry about it. There is no footage of me sewing the ribbon chunks together, which is why I just explained it to you. And the reason that there's no footage is because I did it in about 90 minutes at the house of the person who owns the sewing machine because I had to return the sewing machine that day and then I had to get to the vet. Even as it was, I made it to the appointment with 90 seconds to spare and also I broke a needle. I had been so careful when it was at my house, I was doing so well and then I broke the needle uh, trying to sew down these on the back. There's one thing that you need to do after this and one thing that you might want to do after this. The thing that you need to do is trim the bottom of the ribbons, which works better if you can get someone else to do it for you, or at the very least if you have some kind of dummy that is exactly the same height as you. The thing that you might want to do is finish the ribbons. See how this one is sort of fraying? If you singe the end, then it won't do that. But obviously there are a lot of ends to singe, so it might take you a while. Et voila! One mist cloak. Well done you! You're probably completely scunnered with sewing at this point, and frankly I don't blame you, but by gosh, you look amazing. If you're cosplaying as a generic Mistborn, then you can basically wear whatever you like underneath your Mist cloak. But if you're being Vin, as I wished to be, then you will need a couple of other things. So you'll need a black wig. In the later books, she tends to wear a dark shirt and dark trousers. I had dark trousers. I have a white shirt, which I got from Arm Street, which I really like. A purple scarf as a belt, which they sometimes have her in on covers and stuff. And uh, bare feet, because I don't even know why. There are some very confused looking dog walkers over to my left right now, but hey ho. So I really enjoyed this project, even though it was really time consuming and kind of difficult. I have very much enjoyed reading the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson, and I'm kind of excited to start reading some of the other Cosmere books. 
I hear there's a new one coming out. I hope you enjoyed this very random episode. I hope it inspires you to make your own mist cloak while avoiding all of my mistakes. And I will be back on the 1st of November with something more usual, which may or may not involve Harrison Ford. I will see you soon.